Hello everybody, this is a spreadsheet tutorial video. And what we will do is take a look at creating a random chart using the random number generator. We will use the automated Fibonacci, go through some different things that you can do within the spreadsheet and so on. And this is from OpenOffice. You can uh, OpenOffice has uh, many great features. All the stuff you get on uh, Microsoft uh, Office is available here. Text document, spreadsheet, presentation, drawing, and database. Pretty cool little software which is available for free. And we're going to start off with the random number generator, but I don't like the 10 point font too much. You can see how small that is. So I'm going to start this off by selecting everything with the edit select all and make it a 12 point font. And we're going to use random number generator to determine if stock or a particular stock is going to go higher or lower. And the formula is rand between. You put an equal sign first and you can see here it says bottom and top. So you need to pick a range. It could be between 1 and 2, 1 and 100, 50 and 700. And you can use negative numbers, which I'm going to want to in this case. And I'm going to use negative 30 to 30, which means it will generate a random number between 61 different combinations, the 30 that are negative, 30 that are positive, and the number 0. The first one will come up to negative 20. And uh, what I want to do is calculate each one to work out as a tenth of a percent, meaning negative 20 should be minus 2, but there's a little problem with that, and that is 2% up is not the same or the opposite of 2% down. For if a stock were to go up 200%, it would go from 10 to 30. Yet a stock going from 30 to 10, well, that would lose 67%. So to figure out a formula, what I would like to do is start off with a simple variant. 100 up 1% would go to 101. Therefore, if we take 1, divide that by 101, that would be the similar difference for the 1% on the downside. We can go to Format Cells, we'll make it a percentage, give it four decimals, and we can see it's 0 0.9901 on the downside is the same as one on the upside. But because we're working with uh, a tenth of a percent, I'm going to want this number to be uh, div well, divided by 10 more. There we go. Now what I want to do on cell B is find out if this is a negative or positive number. And I can do that with an if statement, equals if. And the, I put a left bracket and I want to ask the question. If this number here is less than zero, then what I want to do is I want to take this number here and multiply it by this percentage. And if it's not a negative number, then we're simply going to take this number and multiply it by 0.01%. 0, 1 would be 1%, so we'll make it 0, 0, 1. And there we have it. We will start off with an index of 1,000. We'll put the number up top here. And we will take the 1,000 and we will multiply it by the percentage and re-add that number again. So that would bring us to 98020 on this example. So what we can do now is we can copy and paste this a uh, few cells down. But there's going to be a little problem. And these numbers are going to look really, really weird. And there we go. It's, obviously, it's not working. The reason why is because when you copy and paste, what happens is uh, it uh, assumes that you want to take the row below. For example, if I'm copying and pasting here, it took this level here, so it's going to go A6, then A7, A8. But the problem here is this one here. See where it says A1? It's multiplying that cell. Well, what's going to happen here is it's multiplying A2. So what we need to do is put a dollar sign between the A and the 1. And why you put the dollar signs in is when you copy and paste, it'll uh, make it so that uh, it only takes that value. And everything now is uh, working fairly fine we can uh, now draw some Fibonacci. We're going to use some automated Fibonacci. And to do this, we need to find out what the minimum and the maximum values are. Therefore, the minimum, we go equal min, and we will highlight this here. 980. Do the max, which should be 1,020, 80. 
And now it's calculating the maximum and the minimum. So we'll put in here a 38.2% level and a 61.8%. So the formula that we're going to use now is we're going to take the difference between the maximum and the minimum. That's how Fibonacci works. It's the difference of the range. You multiply its percentage and you add its lowest number on top of it. So the 38.2 would be 995.71. We'll do the same thing again. We'll take the uh, maximum, subtract the minimum. We'll multiply 61.8 and then we'll add the minimum again. Now if I copy and paste it, it's obviously going to do the same thing we did before. So all I'm going to do here in cell uh, number 6 is say whatever's here above it is what I want here. And I like the same lines because that means when you make a chart, that means you'll have a straight line drawn all the way across. We can copy and paste this all the way down. And voila, now we got, got this ready to go. So we'll now start off with the chart. You want to highlight the areas that you want. We're going to use cells, or columns C, D, and E. And I'll click on this chart button in here. And it's going to ask me what kind of chart I want. Now if I'm doing a stock chart, you'd think I would work within this. But in order to do, work within these, you need the open, the low, the high, and the close. So I'm going to pick a line chart and lines only. And there is the start of this chart. We'll put it on the side here so that it's away from the data. And there is the start of our chart. Now I don't like, I want to adjust the colors a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is double click on the yellow and we'll make it a nice blackish looking color and give it a width lower than three so it's not as big of a line and we'll do the same thing within the orange one too. We'll change this, this to a black level change the width down to two. There we go. And uh, now we can uh, change the data range so we're going to put more uh, cells in, more data. We got this to cell 44 so now what we're going to do is copy and paste all of this information down to cell 44. So I push the copy and I can start highlighting. Now it's a lot easier for me to just type in 44 in here, push enter, and then I can paste it and it's going to do everything for me. And there we go. There's a look at the chart. And the Fibonacci wasn't too automatic there, was it? No. The reason why was because this maximum was not set at 44. If we adjust this now, it'll fix the Fibonacci. There we go. And at the same point, you can make the chart look a little nicer by maybe changing the scaling a little bit. And we'll do that by double-clicking on these numbers. We'll start with the scaling, and well, we don't need anything lower than 900 right now. So we'll click 900. We don't need a logarithmic one yet, although probably later on we may. Positioning, I like the numbers at the end, so I click on outside end. Line, you won't do anything. Label, same thing. Numbers, if you need decimals, like two decimals or a percent, you may use it. If you do, just unclick this and click where you want, but it's fine the way it is. And font, I like it a little bit bigger, so I'll click on 11. And that, there we go. I can eliminate this because I think these are in the way. And there we have it, a start of a nice looking chart. And we can even add some more data in here, but uh, the maximum here, as you see, I only got to 44. So we'll put in uh, 1144, just so that it goes quite a distance, no matter how far I go. At least up to cell 1144, we'll keep adjusting it. We'll uh, increase the amount. We'll do 50 more sessions, or 50 more uh, periods of data. And go to row 94, do another copy and paste to 94. And this is what we got. Even a bigger, bigger bull market. And it's interesting with a random chart how you can draw these trend lines in. The trend line that would connect these lows would work out very, very well. Now what we're going to do is add a 50-day moving average. So we'll just scroll down to the bottom of this section here. And to do a 50-day moving average, we need to take the average, which is equal average, and we need where cell C is, or the column C is where the data is. And we can see here it says 3R times 1C. We need this to go to 50. So let's just find 50. And there we go. And we'll copy and paste this up to, uh, well, we started on cell 6, so we'll go 55. 
And now we have the 50-day moving average. To get it on the chart, we need to uh, adjust data range and put in column FN, and that should give us a 50-day moving average. We'll uh, make this maybe an orange colored one and reduce its width also down to two. So there we go. Now we got a 50-day moving average. And well, we'll see how well these Fibonacci and uh, moving uh, averages can work. We'll go to uh, row 133 now and uh, do another copy and paste down to that section and see how things go. And there we have it. We're now coming down to that Fibonacci level. You break this trend line and you can see how things are starting to roll over. Now, obviously this is a random chart, so it could not care less whether it's at a key Fibonacci level or not, but Fibonacci is a natural indicator, so it's pretty tough to say even at that also. Uh, we'll continue on doing even some more dates. We'll do another 50 and see how well that 1175 area comes into play. And uh, with I, just, I forgot what level we were going to, so I'm just going to go back to the data range, 183. So we'll copy and paste again this information and bring it to uh, 183. See if 11.75 is support. And uh, what do we see here? We've seen that uh, right, right down, well right now it uh, I went right down to this level here based on this high. So say you want to find out what the Fibonacci from this high happened to be. Well, we can go back on top and state, well, what was what was this number here? You can write it in manually, say for in this example here. And uh, it looks like 13 something. So uh, it's the first couple hundred, or no, it's the first 130 rows or so. So what we'll do is we will find out what the max is for the first 130 so. And we'll use the minimum in here. So now we're going to create another Fibonacci level. So we'll put in, uh, use G because F has got the 50-day uh, moving average. So we'll take this number and subtract it by this number here, multiply the 38.2% and then add the low number again. And uh, that's of course 1072. We'll do the same thing again, this number, subtract this number and multiply this. And we'll And then once again, we'll put an equal sign to take what's in the previous area, copy and paste this all the way down. And we have our second Fibonacci level, which goes to column H. So we'll go in the data range, put in, change this F to an H. And uh, on its way lower, it did manage to come close to its uh, significant Fibonacci point, but I just want to uh, quickly show you how the uh, Fibonacci works. So I'm going to push Control Z and just get rid of everything that I've done. And we're back to where we were before. Okay, so now let's even do a few more of the uh, key data points and uh, see where everything's going to uh, move towards. We'll uh, change the data range to uh, We'll go 400, a big, big change on this chart. And it's going to look a lot different than it did now. Copy this to A400. And there's a look at the chart. It found support at its key Fibonacci level. The 50-day moving average you can see during its stabilization period here. It did stabilize and then move right to its significant Fibonacci level. So to say Fibonacci works on random numbers, uh, I really don't know, but it really did work fairly well on this example. Now I'll show you a logarithmic chart to finish. We'll finish it off with that. 
Now, with the logarithmic chart, what it does is it uh, calculates its percentage moves a little bit better. And um, it doesn't change it much, but it does change it a little bit. We will. There's no numbers in here, so this major interval needs to be in a decimal format. Say we'll use 0.2. And the numbers will be weird-looking numbers as far as like 26 cents here or whatever. And 0.1 didn't, 0.2 didn't make the trick, so we'll do 0.1. And we'll even go lower than that. We'll go 05, just so we have more little areas. And then now with the logarithmic chart, you can see the price movements for major movements a lot better. And uh, that's your random chart. Nothing more than random. I hope you learned something in this video. And have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.